Hey everybody and welcome back. Today I have nine in the chair. I have not seen nine in so long and I was at the salon working all summer into the fall just doing pop-ups so I could just stack up on videos to give to you guys and nine came to visit me and I know I just said I hadn't seen her in a while but the last time I saw nine her hair was dark so when she walked in and had this gray hair I'm like nah what in the world your hair is like completely gray and I just thought it was so beautiful and and for that time period I had been looking for somebody to use as my model to show you guys our new product which is called stainless steel this is the shampoo right here and stainless steel is for our clients with gray hair and it also works for blondes but primarily it's for gray to kick the brassiness so i know you might notice but a lot of times people who have gray hair their hair is in the yellow family and so the way to cancel that out is with purple shampoos i had did a video not too long back just teaching people how to deal with gray how to transition in gray i will link that video at the end and i'm just so happy that nine came in so that i could use my new product on her so that i could show you guys how it works so right now she is getting shampoo with our stainless steel shampoo. It is infused with grapeseed extract and mica. Um, grapeseed promotes scalp and hair health. It adds shine along with that mica. Mika makes the hair very shiny and pretty. Just put that little glitter on the, on the gray, you know, turn it to silver. Um, it's a powerful hydrator. It smooths split ends and it helps tame flyaways. If you put grapeseed oil in your hand, don't put a lot, <laughs> but if you ever need to tame your flyaways, grapeseed oil is one of the cool agents that you can just put in your hand and rub in your hand and wipe over the top of your hair. Um, it also guards against UV damage. So that means once that it gets that brassiness out of your gray, this is the conditioner here. Once it gets the brassiness out of your gray, like things like UV rays, the sun, all of that can turn your gray back yellow again. So it helps guard that. Um, it also soothes the scalps and strengthens your strands and helps minimize those flakes on your scalp. So she's just putting the conditioner in and just massaging it through and also making sure that the product is all along the gray. Most people with gray hair, it's kind of patchy. Nine's hair is super dark in the back. She has super dark moments all throughout her crown. And then it's like really bright hair. You'll see it better when I'm pressing and when I'm blow drying. But just make sure that you get that product all on the brightest of gray so you can get that yellow canceled out. And now that we have the conditioner in, we're going to give Nine a steam treatment. Now, the purpose of the steam treatment is basically it just helps with enhancing product absorption. Your conditioner will better penetrate your strands to improve moisture, balance, and whatever else, you know, whatever other benefits your conditioner has. It, it helps get that conditioner all throughout those strands much better. Now we're going into the blow dryer. We're putting heat protectant on, of course. I put a little more than usual just because that's the purpose. We're trying to guard this gray really, really well. I'm going in and I am about to start her first section. Now, just like with color hair, you want to be very gentle with gray hair. You want to be gentle with all hair, but gray hair and color hair, the elasticity is a little off. So you want to make sure you're being extra careful, extra gentle with the hair. So that's why I'm just going through it with my wide tooth comb. And I'm just going to make sure that I am being as gentle with Nine's hair as possible. Now with the wide tooth comb, I'm just going to go ahead and comb through this first section. That back section always seems like it just, the comb goes through it so much easier than the rest of the hair. So when it's time to comb the hair out in that back section by the nape, it's easy to comb out. Don't let it get you hyped. <laughs> Don't let it get you hyped. Because you get to the next section and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> but I'm going in. Now I am blow drying nine with the concentrator nozzle on medium heat instead of using high heat which also brings yellows to gray. 
you want to use medium heat on gray hair. Now, I know that higher heat helps the hair get straighter, but do you want the hair straighter or do you want your color to thrive, you know? And so just make a decision because you can get it straight. You just have to take your time, take thinner sections, and it'll still get straight with the blow dryer. That's why I use a concentrator because even if the heat is a little lower, it'll concentrate it all into one section of the hair at a time so that you can stretch the hair as good as possible. Now, remember I was talking about the color being patchy first. Let me just show you. See where Nine has heat damage? Um, she has about two, three inches of really strong curls and the rest is stringy. So as you see, the color is patchy here. It's so bright. Her gray is so bright and pretty here. It's almost pretty much silver. And that yellow is already pulled out. I can see the difference already. It's just pretty much like a silvery white instead of like a muddy yellow. And that's what our shampoo and conditioner does. It just pulls that yellow out. And I'm just going through with that medium heat again. And so what we're going to do, me and Nan talked and she want her hair cut pretty much to, to get the fullness back into her hair today. We're going to take off a few inches just to get her hair back full and healthy, get a lot of those stringy ends off. And then we'll gradually take the rest of the stringy hair off. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're going to press the hair and put more heat into the hair when you're taking off the heat damage. But if you press your hair correctly and space out the amount of times that you put heat in your hair throughout the year, you can keep your, your curls very strong. Don't think that heat is the enemy. It's lack of knowledge. So just make sure that you are just taking a really nice, good amount in between time. I would say... Just if you are a heat girl, maybe put heat in your hair every two months. I know that sounds like, oh no, how? <laughs> but every two months is what I say. I would go for protective styles more often just to keep your curls integrity. You know, I like my curls to do a little boy on back. You know, I want them to, I want them to be real pretty and spirally. So in order to keep that integrity, you are going to have to take some time in between those presses and you have to always make sure you're doing one pass going over the hair over and over again all it's going to do is break down your curl pattern and if you want to keep your curls you're going to be hurt it's, it's going to be sad so i'm going in with the hot comb like it's easter sunday and i'm just pressing nines edges to make sure they're nice and smooth for her silk press So now I've put our steady cut and collar around Nine's neck. I am using the steady cut and collar in black this time. I know a lot of times you see me using the gray collar and I'm using black because Nine's hair is so light that, you know, the contrast is better. So I'm able to see where Nine's hair is and I am going to cut on that third line. Now you don't have to follow the line. The purpose of the cut and collar isn't only just to be a guideline. It just gives you a resting place. Sometimes I see people cutting on towels and they're the point of their shears gets stuck in the loops of the towels and it staggers you while you're cutting. That's a disruption. You don't want to have that type of disruption while you're cutting somebody's ends. Uh, also, the cape is it's ripply, so you might not get a even cut because those ripples make you think the hair is doing something that it's not. So the steady cutting collar just basically lays everything out flat so you can get that hair done sharp and straight and even the very first time so you can find this on deeperthanhair.com i will leave a link for this in the box as well so another thing i'm going to always talk about is shears make sure that you're using professional grade shears i always get my shears from herstrandsofhair.com they are just moving through the hair like butter you don't want to use kitchen shears or safety scissors or anything that's not for hair because all it does is split the ends more whether you realize it while it's happening or not so always use salon grade shears
Now, hopefully, before your eyes, you can see Nan's hair just getting fuller from taking those straggly ends off. Her hair wasn't in terrible condition. I, I can tell that Nan takes hair, care of her hair at home, but sometimes you just need a little professional help, and that's okay. And Nan has her cosmetology license, so I'm not surprised that her hair is, you know, in great shape. So, you know, sometimes you just need somebody behind your head to see everything that's really going on. Um, and so, yep, <laughs> that's what's going on. Now I'm pulling down the rest and the sides of her hair so I can match it up with the length of the back. And what I'm gonna do here is just kind of round it off just a little bit so it won't have a line of demarcation. I'm just gonna graduate it up into the length of the front of her hair and her frame. Next, it's time to pull the hair up and to make sure that the crown of her hair is matching the ends along the back because you can't trim the, anyone's hair or your own hair and just skip that part of the hair because then you'll end up with breakage because those split ends are just going to keep moving up the shaft and moving up the strand of hair and then it's just going to end up breaking and you're gonna be like where's this breakage coming from is it from ponytails is it from not sleeping with a scarf is anything but it's like it makes the hair weaker so you have to pull the hair up and make sure that you get those ends off of every strand possible Now look at Nine's hair, it's heavy, it looks fuller, it's just beautiful, the color is there, it's just so, so nice and silvery, you know, it look a little like glitter to me, like a little tinsel. So, and then we're gonna take that collar off and we're gonna get started on the press. Now I have my grip comb attachment that I got from the grip comb, man, game changer, okay? I don't have to do the chase method anymore. <laughs> I just attach that comb to my flat iron and you can attach it to any flat iron. Um, it's recommended more of a flat surface, but my iron is rounded and it still worked for me and it's still on my iron to this day. This is months ago. Um, and so I will put the link for the grip comb below because it just basically separates those ends and allow you to get that perfect press the first time without crushing those ends inside and just making sure that everything is in alignment while you're doing the hair. I am also pressing Nan's hair today on 430, the temperature of 430, not 450 like most people would go because I just wanna take that temperature down because again, high temperatures will yellow the gray. So you wanna just stay in this area. We made sure that we pulled that brass out of her hair today and we don't wanna put it back on the first attempt. So I'm just going in with a lower temperature just like I did with the blow dryer to make sure that she keeps her new silver strands intact. So if you are a reader or a subscriber of Deeper Than Hair magazine, our latest issue with Mara Brock Akil on the front is in celebration of gray hair. And I am not going to lie, I am so excited to be gray one day. <laughs> you know, it's like at first I started freaking out. Even if you read my editor's note, I talk about how I was raised on all the women around me making sure that their grays didn't show. Everybody colored their hair and they made sure that as soon as those grades popped up, they put color on it. And so, and that's okay. If, if you are not ready yet, that is totally fine. But just being around women who are embracing their gray and taking care of their gray and just looking so beautiful while they wear it, it helped me a lot with just a little anxiety that I might've had about it. And so I want you guys to read it. Even if you're not gray, send the link to somebody who might be, somebody who's going gray, somebody who's been in gray, embracing their gray, and just um, share the knowledge and just get into it because it's such a beautiful issue. I've had so many people tell me that it's their favorite issue of Deeper Than Hair magazine thus far. So let me know how you feel about it. If you read it already, let me know how you feel about it. If you haven't, get into it and, and tell me what's your vibes. <laughs> Do you love it or not? Um, and let me know how you feel. Like, 
you know, when, when it's time to go gray, will you allow it? I know one thing is, um, one of the girls that we interviewed, she talked about how she understands that all gray is not created equal because some people's gray grows in different than others. So, you know, you look at a lot of people's hair, just like how we look at other people's curls and we're like, yeah, if my curls could just be like that, I feel like a lot of people do that with gray. If my gray could just be like that. And, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. So you want to just find the beauty in your own hair and just rock out like that. And, you know, it is what it is. So I, I just want to know your opinion. You know, how do you feel about going gray? So now that we have pressed and feathered Nine's hair, I am going to take a petal brush. Petal brushes stimulate the scalp. And I am just going to wrap her hair around in a wrap. Uh, I know everybody knows what a wrap is, a little doobie wrap, <laughs> but you're basically using your head as one big old roller to put that shape into the hair. This is how you're gonna wrap your hair every night with a silk or satin scarf. Don't put any product in it. You're gonna allow your natural oils to come from your scalp and, and nurture your hair. That's it, that's all you'll ever need. Uh, and then also, you're gonna take, right now I'm gonna put the Glass Brilliant Shine on and I am going to put a plastic cap on for 10 minutes and I'm gonna sit her under the dryer with cold air. That basically is going to lay all the strands in place. I know you guys know, but a lot of times that gray hair is a different texture than your black hair, your dark brown hair ever was. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I do this for a lot of people's hair, but gray is really good too because sometimes gray gets a little wiry or some people's gray is really soft. So this is just basically laying all the strands in place and getting that hair together. Now I'm just taking a while to comb and I'm going to comb Nine's hair down in the same direction that I pressed it, taking a soft brush and laying her edges down. And then you're just gonna see all this body and fullness and layers. It's nice and healthy. Uh, as you see, it's just shining. You don't see that yellow in the hair anymore. And it's on point. It's on point, look at that. Feathers is all in alignment. Everything is fly. And now I could go outside and shake her gray hair like it ain't about nothing. She loves it, I love it, and that's all that matters. And hopefully we inspired somebody today to embrace their gray, you know, or send this to somebody who, you know, might be thinking about it or working through it. It just helps give, give love to people who are moving in this direction because it's such a beautiful place to be. So I just want to thank you all for watching. Thank you now for being my model all randomly <laughs> and I will see y'all next time. Bye.